YouTubers, it's Platt, and today we're continuing on our corn mash series. Um, in today's video, we're going to go over how to make corn mash using an enzyme. To uh, quickly review this corn mash series, the first video in the series is the original video I did on corn mash early on in my YouTube videos. Uh, in it, I used corn, but I also used sugar in there, so it wasn't a true corn mash. And, and I, again, apologize about that. Wasn't trying to be misleading. Uh, in the next video, Corn Mash Revisited, I went over and reviewed where I made a mistake the first time. And I kind of went over the process as a whole. And I discussed the three ways, main ways, that we could uh, mash corn. Uh, the next video after that was the first way and the simplest way, which is to take corn syrup, which the manufacturer has done the work for us. They've added enzymes to extract the sh to t convert starches in the corn into sugars and give us something to work with as far as a fermentable base to create alcohol. Um, in this video, we're going to take it a little step further, and, and this time we're going to do the extracting of the sugars out of the corn or converting the starches into sugar. And how we're going to do that is we're going to take, we're going to use cornmeal, but if you had flake corn or if you crushed corn yourself, we're going to take that and then we're going to add the enzyme we need to convert that starch into sugar. Um, if you have access to a home brew shop, they sell something called amylase. It's an enzyme that again helps convert starches into sugars. Um, I'm going to use something today that's available to most people and uh, is just easy to use. Uh, something called Beano uh, helps you with gas if you have digestive problems. But inside Beano is, is that amylase enzyme. And we're going to use that to get to take the starch from the corn and turn it into sugar, thus giving us something to work with as far as fermentation. And then our final video that we're going to be doing later is if we did the natural method, and that is to germinate the corn, get the internal enzymes to do the work for us. So what we're going to do today, like I said, is just take the cornmeal, we're going to add the enzymes, and we're going to get those sugars working for us. How we're going to do that today, just a quick overview, is we're going to take a pound of the cornmeal, and we're going to add it to a gallon of water. I've got the gallon of water heating up. Um, a little advice if you're doing this experiment is to use one of these brew in the bag uh, little bags that you would see in home brewing. This cornmeal gets real sticky, real clumpy. Um, also, too, it could scorch on the bottom of, the, of your uh, pot that you're, you're cooking with. So to avoid that, I'm going to use this bag and it makes cleanup a lot easier for us. So let me go ahead and heat up this water and we'll come back, we'll add the cornmeal and we'll work our way through the process. Okay gang, so I've got our one gallon of water up to a boil. Now let me tell you why I'm bringing it up to a boil. It's for two reasons. A, we're making a fermentable liquid and this helps with sanitation, which is always a good thing. And B, when we add our cornstarch at boiling temperatures, it helps do something called gelatinization. I hope I'm saying that right. Basically, it's going to help prepare the cornstarch for our enzyme addition and helps us get the starches out of the corn. So I've got this water to a boil. Let me add our cornstarch. And we're going to want to make sure we get this thoroughly stirred and incorporated. And one thing you're going to notice when you add this in is it's going to get real thick like a porch. And that's fine because that's just the gelatinization happening. So let me get this heated up, or let me get this stirred in, and we're going to leave it at that boiling point or at this temperature for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then we're going to cut the heat and let this solution drop down to around 155 degrees. And it's at that point we're going to add the uh, enzyme. So let me finish this up and then we'll come back to prep the enzyme. Alright gang, so I've let our corn, 
cornmeal solution. I keep saying cornstarch, I apologize. Our cornmeal water solution. I, I got the water up to a boil, added our cornmeal, let it sit for anywhere 10, 15, up to about 20 minutes or so. And I just want to show you real quick just how thick and lumpy that is. There's going to be tons of lumps in this thing, so you want to stir, make sure you break those up. So anyway, I, I let that sit at a boiling temperature, again, between anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes. And now I've cut the heat, I'm going to let it drop down to 155, and when we're doing that, I'm going to prep our uh, enzyme addition. Now, like I said, if you have access to a brew shop, you can get the uh, brewer's amylase or enzymes or whatever. Uh, I'm going to use Beano, and what I'm going to do is just take a couple of the little Beano pills, and we're just going to crush those up, and we'll just take the bottom of the spoon, and break those up. Alright. There we go. I'm just going to crush those up a little bit. You could take a muddler if you have one. Uh, fortunately, I've left my muddler at work. So, anyway, just crush up a couple of these pills. Um, in some of the videos or some of the articles I've read, some people just use one Beano pill per gallon um, because I want to make sure this works out right and I'm not necessarily worried about taste or whatever. This is just more of a science experiment. I'm going to use two of them and then I'm just going to add a little bit of water to these crushed pills and we're going to create like a little oh, Beano slurry is the best way to, uh, to, to uh, call this. So I've got this all mixed together. Alrighty. And so we've got our Beano slurry ready. We're going to let this drop again to 155 degrees. Then I'm going to add my Beano slurry to this. And we're going to let it set at around 155 degrees. You might want to keep that on a low heat if need be. But we're going to keep it around 155 from anywhere between 60 and 90 minutes. And at that point of time, the enzyme, i.e. the Beano, is going to start working on those starches and start the chemical process to convert them uh, from starches into a usable sugar. So let me get this down to 155, we'll add the Beano, and then we'll come back at the end, and I'm going to show you how it changes. This won't be quite as thick, and you'll, you'll just see the process at the end before we prep it to go into the ferment. So real quick, I just want to show you kind of what we're working with. Uh, if you remember, I showed you just how thick this, uh, our cornmeal water solution was and uh, probably when you cut down uh, the temperature off boil you notice that it got even thicker well we're about an hour into this and I just want to show you now how soupy how soupy this uh, solution is uh, we went from like a thick porridge now to something closer to a soup uh, we're gonna let this sit for probably another 10 or so minutes and then we're gonna end up straining off the cornmeal and uh, collecting our liquid and get ready for the fermenter. So let me finish up here and we'll come back. So we finished up our uh, corn mash, let it cool down, filtered it out, and then we put it in our fermenter and left it overnight. And as you can see, we're starting to get a little action in our airlock, a couple little bubbles. Um, we did end up only getting a little over a half gallon of liquid, so might want to adjust our uh, amount of water, maybe a gallon and a half or a gallon and a third, something like that, to the pound of cornmeal. But we're going to let this just ferment out for about a week. And uh, then this would, if we were going to distill, this would be ready to distill. But I just want to show you that we, uh, we are successful. We did get uh, some starches to convert to sugar, and now we've got fermentation happening uh, thanks to our yeast eating that sugar. So let's come back and do a quick wrap up. Okay so in summation we kind of ramped it up this video a little bit. If you remember the previous video in this corn mash series we just took corn syrup and added it to water. The manufacturer did all the work for us. This time we did a little heavy lifting in the sense that we converted the starches into sugars ourselves with the addition of an enzyme. Um, 
basically what we did was took one pound of cornmeal and added it to a gallon of water. As you can see, we're a little short on here, so you may want to adjust the water level to about a gallon and a half, probably. That cornmeal does absorb quite a bit of water. But anyway, we, we heated up the cornmeal, we added our enzyme, in this case we used a Beano, and the enzymes in this Beano started the reactions of converting the starches into sugar, and this has now given us something that is fermenting right now. And if you were going to distill it, this would eventually go into your still uh, to be made into corn whiskey. Um, you could take this process as high as you want to. Uh, we could have used what's called an iodine test to have tested the starches or to see if we had conversion of those starches into sugar. Uh, because we were able to get to ferment, that obviously proves that we did get conversion done. But you can get one of those iodine tests that we find at your local homebrew shop. Uh, if we wanted to, we could have done uh, some gravity readings like we do in homebrew. You'll do one before fermentation and one after. And that will get, help you gauge the uh, ABV of your uh, your wort or your liquid. Um, like I said, there, there's a lot of science behind this. And that's why I want to give you a couple of uh, items if you want to learn, get more into making a corn mash, distilling, or just are really into the science of brewing. Uh, first, check out distilling.com. It's the American Home, or it's American uh, Distilling uh, Organization or whatever. Um, they, they have online classes, there's live workshops, uh, the forums have a plethora of information. Uh, they, they do sell some books on the topic, so a great place if you're really wanting to get into this. Uh, if you're just really into the nuts and bolts and the science behind home brewing and, and mashing in and stuff like that, check out How to Brew by John Palmer. It goes into all kinds of grain conversions, uh, everything, and the difference between the, you know, barley, wheat, oats, corn, and it really goes into the science of this and uh, probably probably is a little above what we're doing here but again if you really want to get to it that's a great resource um the next video will in this series will go into actually taking corn itself and germinating it or getting it to sprout and where it internally inside the kernel does that starch conversion and uses the internal enzymes that are available to it so that's the next video and that'll be the last part of this series so I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. As always, feel free to leave comments or questions in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Well, until next time, bottoms up.